Okay, this morning is the Global Innovation Entrepreneur Forum. And I just mentioned that this morning we will be hearing from Global VC guests sharing with us their precious opinion and advice. I think every startup wants to know if they're heading toward the right direction or if their innovation is going to be the next big thing. Our speaker is not new to us. He's also with us last year. He is the general partner of Phoenix Venture. This is a Silicon Valley-based VC that is founded by a group of seasoned entrepreneurs. And this person is also our chief judge this year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our prominent speaker, Mr. Anis Uzaman. Hello, Anis. Happy to see you again. Hello. Yes. Good. Hello, everyone. So thank you very much for having me. Um, I came all the way from Silicon Valley uh, because I feel that it's such an important show in Asia. So Phoenix Venture Capital, um, as um, was introduced, uh, we are a Silicon Valley-based venture capital firm. And today, I want to talk what, are, what is most probably going to be the next big thing in the world. So let's, um, I think you can see some devices here. And if you look at these devices, these are personal assistants. And this is what most probably is one of the biggest trend that you are seeing today. From the left, that is Cortina from Microsoft, then Alexa, from Amazon, Google Home from Google, and finally, you are seeing Siri from Apple. These four are known as the most prominent personal assistants today. And these are made up of artificial intelligence. And most probably, artificial intelligence is going to be one of the next big things in the world and it is going to prevail as one of the trends that you see today. So let's talk about more. This person, the CEO of Amazon, started creating the revolution. They started working on this personal assistant artificial intelligence engine long in 2011. And then they developed this product and today, Amazon has more demand than they can supply. Today in the US, if you want to buy an Echo speaker, you have to wait in the waiting line, and this is how popular these speakers are, because this can exactly work like your personal assistant. So talking about artificial intelligence, if you look at this market, this market is going to be 38 point 8 billion in 2025. This is how this market is going to be. It is expected that it is going to be much more bigger than what you see here. Now, by artificial intelligence, I mean machine learning. I mean deep learning. We are talking about natural language processing. We are talking about computer vision. We are talking about computer reasoning and we're also talking about a strong AI. All these things, in a word, we're calling it artificial intelligence today. And artificial intelligence is most probably is going to change the world in a big way. I know that there are many entrepreneurs here who are trying to build something, who are leading startup ideas and innovations here. I know that there are many of you who are seeing here are from large corporations. Please remember that most probably, if you have not adopted artificial intelligence, or you are not using artificial intelligence to develop your product, most probably you are not going to be uh, one of the most you know, visible product in the market as you develop this. So let's look at some of the initiative taken by some of these countries. First of all, I'll talk about Singapore. 
Singapore put together a plan of $107 million for five years to develop artificial intelligence in the areas of healthcare, finance, and city planning. If you look at Dubai, Dubai Water and Electricity Company has put together their own Alexa. They do not call it Hamas, they call it Ramas. And this Ramas is helping them as an AI engine with all their customer support. Dubai has also the plan to actually use AI in the most effective way to make them one of the high-tech metropolis in the world. The government of UK and Canada, they are not also behind. They have put together allocations in UK, 93 million pounds, and in Canada, 91.5 million Canadian dollar to develop AI systems. So that's how much pressure and push we see from the government agencies as artificial intelligence is going to become the next big thing. Let's look at some of the movements of the large corporations. Microsoft is not behind. As Apple, Google, and Facebook are trying to do their own things in the space of AI, Microsoft earlier, end of last year, earlier this year, they have put together a venture capital fund just focusing on AI. And in the last six months, they have made investment into some of the most prominent AI startups in the world. In six months, they have indeed made seven AI investments, and these are considered some of the top AI investments in the world. Let's look at Apple. Apple is not behind. Apple is acquiring companies. Just two weeks ago, they have acquired a company called Lattice Data. What this company does, this company take unstructured data and using artificial intelligence, this company is able to structure them. Now, all the data that you see around you because of the development of IoT and stuff, 70 to 80% of the data that you have around you are unstructured data. So what Apple da did, they bought Lattice to make sure that the data they create from all the platform they're building can be structured with the help of this startup's technology, and this company is latest. It is rumored, not sure, that they spent $200 million to buy out these startups to strengthen their data resource. Let's look at another startup. MindMeld is a startup from MIT. This was one of my portfolio as well. I invested in them at the end of 2014. So this was one of the companies that does a good job with voice recognition. And I invested in this company along with Google Ventures, and they just got bought out just two weeks ago by Cisco for $125 million. So Cisco, as one of the older telecommunication players, they're not also behind. They're also tapping into this market because they know that artificial intelligence is going to be the next big thing. So, this is not working. Um, technical difficulties. My artificial intelligence is not working well to now, so I'm getting it fixed, okay? All right. Can I go down?
Okay. So, um, <laughs> so let me keep talking when they come back. Um, so artificial intelligence is so hot that my company, so we also invest worldwide. Um, in the last three years, um, we have invested in more than 100 companies around the globe. Um, 60 to 70 percent of the investments that we make are still in Silicon Valley, um, but uh, we also invest heavily in Asia. So 40 percent of our investment in Asia. In Asia, we divide the investments into two different parts. Um, kind of East Asia, where we have Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and China. And on the other side, we have Southeast Asia, where we focus um, in countries like Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, uh, Thailand, um, India, Bangladesh, um, those countries. So we've invested all over, uh, but recently we also fo started focusing uh, heavily in IoT, in artificial intelligence. In the last 24 months, we have invested into more than 10 AI startups in Silicon Valley and outside of Silicon Valley. So I wanted to... Um, give you a feeling of some of the very prominent startups that will give you an example of the level of technology that is investable. Um, and I am willing to invest. So this, there is a company called DeepMap. And this is a company that provides you the software that gives you accurate, high definition mapping and real time localization support. So if you actually able to take the picture of a road using a digital camera, they use a technology uh, using LiDAR technology, and they're able to accurately uh, define the road. And this is a must thing to have for all the technology that is being developed for autonomous cars. You know, everybody in the world, from Toyota to Uber to Google, everybody wants their car to drive on its own. And to drive the car on the road, they need the help of a technology called Deep Map. So what they are doing is definitely going to become an engine for all of the developers of the autonomous cars to actually make it a reality. I'm going to quickly show you a video of to show you how they look at the roads when they look at the map. Oops. Can you run it? Should I skip? All right, let's just take a few moments. We're experiencing some technical issue. OK, we're back. We'll collect it over several runs of the data. Usually, we'll collect it over several runs of the same location. We'll bring it into the cloud. We'll run a bunch of processing algorithms to create a single picture unified of, of all the runs of the data, of all the sensors on the, of the data. And it, it will create a fairly high resolution 3D image of the area. From that, we can create and model down to very detailed accuracy all the geometric features in the road that are relevant to the self-driving car. The team of former Google and Apple engineers is racing to beat Uber, TomTom, and Google itself to make the best 3D maps. Unlike Google and Apple Maps, the Deep Map system is aimed at helping robots navigate rather than humans. The 3D maps complement the car's sensors by giving them a detailed awareness of the environment outside the car's field of view. So here, here we're seeing the usage of the map that we've created by a car that's driving. So now it knows that the lane lines are here, the signs are where the, the signs are indicated. And so now it can start making decisions about things in its environment and planning accordingly. This is really the end product then of the maps that you guys have spent so long building. Yes, this, this is the ultimate goal of using the map. 
And with $30 million in venture capital funding, the company's confident it can navigate a path to success. So this gives you an idea about the technologies that are going to be very successful. So this is the area of autonomous car where AI is playing a major role. Um, I wanted to show you something else also. Um, okay, oops, no, 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 too much. All right, so um, yeah. So I also wanted to introduce you this company. This is also artificial intelligence, um, but this is a little bit different types of artificial intelligence. Um, so automation in the factories is going to be extremely important, especially in countries like Taiwan and China, uh, where like automation is needed because the manpower, the labor cost is going up. So uh, Osaro is a company that develops AI um, to automate robots. So as you know that robots, when as an engineer, I think many of you are engineers, that when you program a robot, it takes six to nine months to have a perfect manufacturing robot to carry a thing from one place to another. And it was a nightmare for the engineers from long time ago, when I was an engineer myself, is to automate these robots and to teach the robots that do what I'm asking you to do. So it was a dream for all the engineers to show the robot that pick up a thing from here and drop it there. And because robots did not have an eye. So this is a company, Osaro, uh, which is one of the most probably the biggest AI manufacturing company in the planet it is going to become. Um, they developed this first. They gave the eyes to the robot and created a software that through the camera, if the robot sees you what you are doing, the robots can do what you are doing. So it is able to teach the robots and make it learn itself through the deep learning process so that robots doesn't need to be tuned. So let me give you an use case. In Taiwan, there are earthquakes, right? You have earthquakes. So if there is a manufacturing plant and if there is an earthquake, this manufacturing plant gets shut down for six to nine months before every single robot can be tuned, like you're tuning your piano. Okay, with this technology, when the earthquake is gone, the robot remembers what it needs to do. It doesn't need to be tuned anymore. It can tune itself. So that's gonna save you billions and trillions of dollars around the world in manufacturing. So I'm gonna show you a video. You are not allowed to take any picture or video of that, okay? I'm just gonna show you, just see it. So we're gonna use a robot from Germany from KUKA, which is one of the most famous you know, public robot company. And we have um, programmed the robot with the AI software. And it has a camera that we have attached through a tape. And it is able to see for the first few times how we're going to teach it. And then it is able to replicate on its own. Again, you are not allowed to take any video, please. OK? So see. So this is a KUKA robot. And through the use of a 3D mouse, we are actually teaching it how to grab a three-dimensional object. This is the 3D mouse, and the camera is the eye of the robot. You see we have attached it with a tape. And you can see we are teaching it now. You see 3D mouse and laptop. After doing a few trials, the robot is able to pick up the 3D object on its own. Now you see it has, it is trained. It is moving on its own brain now. It is able to detect the right object it is able to grab. Even if you disturb it, it doesn't listen to you anymore. So robots are taking over the world now, right? So I'm an investor, but I'm also an engineer. And I studied in Tokyo Institute of Technology. And we tried to do this many, many years ago. And before the you know, invention of deep learning and the processes developed, this is an impossible thing. And this is something that any of you, as a startup, if you can do it, you are going to make a billion dollar company. There is no confusion in my, in my mind. So this is what you want to create if you're a good engineer. This is the type of a startup you want to come up with. So I am the lead investor in this company. Originally, this company was invested by Jerry Young, one of the Taiwan's son. Uh, Jerry Young is the co-founder of Yahoo. And uh, Peter Thiel, 
the co-founder of PayPal, they actually did the original investment, then Jerry gave me a call and told me that, can I pick it up in the Series A round? And we just finished another round. It will be announced in the next few days. You will be able to see it. Uh, the reason I could not show you the video, because this is a manually taken video, because there is no public video yet. It is, that's why it's confidential. But this is the type of invention I wanted to inspire you with, that this is what gonna make you a unicorn that you think of, nothing else. Um, so going to another uh, big topic is IoT and big data. I will try to explain this in short. So this is also very going to be very important, and it is going to be one of the biggest things. So let's look at the, the size of this market. So IoT market, if you look at this, this is the latest data from McKinsey. And at nine different sectors, the market size is going to be anywhere between 3.9 trillion to 11.1 trillion dollar market. So if you're developing something, or if you are planning to come up with a product or technology, if your product or technology is still is not an IoT, I mean, there is something wrong that you're doing, most probably. You should fix your path. Um, so IoT is going to be one of the biggest things here. Um, in the sector of retail, to factory, to office, to home, vehicles, cities, and healthcare, in all sectors, IoT is going to be another big thing. Um, this is another interesting way of seeing the data that I'm sure that you have never seen this. Um, so when, as a VC, we look at investment, we also see how we look at the market. Um, so this is a unique way of seeing things. So this is how the ecosystem, how big the ecosystem is. And I have tried to compare the ecosystem between what Amazon is did, what Google did, what Facebook did. So Google did searches. Then Facebook did you know, social network. So with Facebook, about 1.6 billion people are connected. But with IoT, 10 billion devices are going to be connected. That's how big IoT is going to become. So if you are doing something related to IoT, then you are most probably going to become the winner. You'll be surprised to know that you know, we hear IoT all the time, and a lot of people are saying that, oh, what is next? I always ask them, what do you mean? What is next? I have not even seen a smart home. I just heard about it. So that's where we are at. There is no deployment has, that has been done. So IoT is going to be big, and this is something that you definitely want to see. Um, I wanted to introduce you some very trendy company from, uh, from the USA, not from the Silicon Valley necessarily. So this is a company called Matrix. And I wanted to bring up this company because Taiwan as a country is very strong in hardware. They're very strong in manufacturing, right? So this is a company that taken many, many sensors and put it in one hardware and created a hub or in some sense an ecosystem so that young people like yourselves is able to create companies based on this ecosystem. So I'm going to show you this device and how it helps you to create a great IoT environment. Introducing the Matrix. Powerful and beautifully designed. 15 sensors in one little device. An amazing platform to build endless IoT applications. Empowered with 15 sensors capable of processing audio, detecting human emotions, and responding to environmental stimuli, the Matrix is breaking new ground on the convergence of the physical and online worlds. For users, it's the simplicity of one device able to do hundreds of things at the same time. Your Matrix in your home can become the monitoring device. It can become the computer vision a device that recognizes you when you get home. Welcome back. Would you like me to set the air to your preferred temperature and play your favorite playlist? Yes. So computer vision uh, through the camera on the matrix uh, allows the matrix to understand the world around it. Just by any app you download, it changes the functionality completely of the matrix. You can put it in a package facility. It will uh, identify objects in a assembly line. It's, it's basically doing the job of what a human could do, but it's doing billions of calculations a second. So I, I hope it gave you some idea. By the way, everyone, um, I want you to 
believe one thing, that every single company I'm going to show you today, this is the cutting edge of the world. There is nothing beyond this. This is the ultimate path that you're seeing in every single domain. I'm going to show you two other companies, and they're definitely number one to position holder in their own segments. And I wanted to give you a feeling that where the world is going, and that's why I came all the way, 8,000 miles, I guess, 8,000 kilometers away that I had to come here to show you that what we are investing in. Um, so I wanted to show you something else. Uh, you have heard about Amazon, and you have heard about the experience that they're trying to bring in using IoT. I'm not sure whether you have gone to a physical store, but I wanted to give you a feeling that how the physical store is going to look like. So let's watch the next video, and this is how IoT is going to make Amazon help with to become shopping experience of the next century. Four years ago, we started to wonder, what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go? What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So how does it work? We used computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion, much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our Just Walk Out technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. Your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. Everyone, this was the store from Seattle in Washington. So um, this is the new experience. Uh, do you remember what Amazon used to do? They used to sell books, by the way, and what they are doing today. They have changed the way people use technology. So there is one good learning for a lot of large corporations around the world, that you started with selling books, but today you lead the world with the trend that you are creating. Here, another thing to learn from this Amazon experience, that everybody is talking about, go online, go online. But you know, Apple and Amazon, they're showing a way that go back offline, a combination of offline and online can make you winner. That's why Apple, with all these app stores around the world, they are the winners. And Amazon is trying to go back there with the same thing. So going online is most probably not the only way. A good combination of online and offline most probably creates the biggest billion dollar platforms of the world. I wanted to show you something else. Big data is going to be very, very important. And data is going to come from all different devices, all different technologies that people like you develop. So processing this data and, and processing it in the way that you can use for the next other thing is going to be extremely important. One of the companies that I respect and personally believe is one of the biggest startups in the big data space is a company called Tamar. And they have created a revolution in how they process data from different sources. I'm going to quickly show you one use case of this, but they have been able to partner with some of the biggest people in different domains to process their data. So this is another idea for you, is that data processing can be another big way to actually achieve what you are trying to achieve today. I'm going to quickly show you that how they're using some of the medicine drug developers with the FDA approval process. The path to FDA approval is lined with plenty of challenges. So, timely, accurate submission of clinical trial data is absolutely critical. Formatting your clinical study data is time-consuming, expensive, and error-prone. 
It can throw your clinical trial submission way off course and increase time to market. And because standardization is expensive and slow, most companies only standardize what's absolutely necessary for CDIS submission, leaving 80% of clinical trial data unusable for analytics. Good news, now there's an easy way to speed FDA submissions. Introducing Tamer, the scalable way to unify clinical study data and quickly convert to CDIS format. Here's how it works. Tamer takes your historical data directly from SAS and legacy file formats and automatically converts 80% of clinical study data using machine learning. Whenever conversion steps cannot be automated, Tamer generates questions for data experts, collects responses, and feeds them back into the system for continuous learning and improvement. As Tamer learns, future data transformations become easier, accuracy and speed improve, and institutional knowledge builds as new trial data sets are introduced. Not only that, when the CDIS standards are updated, Tamer updates any older submissions to match new requirements. And you can leverage all of this data in your clinical data warehouse for better analytics. Why rely on expensive manual data conversion processes when you can use Tamer to streamline CDIS submissions? Only Tamer stays on top of change requirements. So I think um, I'm going to the next thing. It is stopped. Can I go to the next slide? You know, I packed this, uh, my presentation slide with a lot of data, and that's why <laughs> I think it is getting stuck. It is not easy. So I'm going to next. So before I finish, everyone, I know that a lot of uh, you, a, a, many of you uh, are entrepreneurs, and you want to challenge yourself. So uh, our firm, Phenox, we actually arrange a global competition called Startup World Cup. And we have started it from last year. And uh, this was the last year. And as you can see, we had great, great people. Uh, Steve Wozniak from Apple. Uh, we had Damon John from Shark Tank. Um, we had a lot of people participating from different corners of the world, Guy Kawasaki. Uh, and, and Alexis Ohanian from Reddit. Uh, this is like the global competition. So this year, we are actually doing, so this was the last year. As you can see, all the famous people you can think of, from uh, Y Combinator, Kevin Hell, David Cohen from Techstar, Tim Draper from DFJ, uh, Edith from 500 Startup, Eric Feng from Kleiner Parkings, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, Reddit uh, co-founder, um, Guy Kawasaki from Chief Evangelist of Apple and Damon John, these are some of the people who participated in the last year's grand finale in San Francisco. Um, so we're doing it in this year again. We have launched it recently. We're going to do it in 30 different countries. And we're expecting one regional to be here in Taiwan as well. So um, you know, I know that last year, many of you helped here. I have Jerry Young, who was a judge last year um, in Taipei as well. So we're expecting to give away a million dollars in an in investment prize to the winner. And last year, the grand winner was from Japan, um, in an IoT company. So this, this year, we're going to do it in 30 different regionals. We actually, um, after the first year, we got applications from 63 countries who wanted to host a regional event in their own, own country. And we actually could only accept half the countries. So it will be 30 different countries. Uh, we are still in the process of finalizing an event in Taiwan. Uh, but we already finalized some events in the neighboring countries as well. So um, you are most welcome to participate in this event. Uh, we are expecting these people to be 
speakers in the grand finale uh, in San Francisco. It is going to be on May 18th. Uh, so please feel free to come there. And you can actually go to www.startupworldcup.io to actually access that. And become my Facebook friend. Um, and then you will have access to all the information and the latest technologies that we are looking into. That's all I have for you. I hope it was informative to all of you. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. <laughs>